Good evening, friends. The sun is set, and I'm back with another tale from my collection. Now it's time to grab a snack. Dim the lights if you dare, and let me take you into the night with a story I call Scratcher. I got a call from my girlfriend this evening. She was not feeling well and asked if I could come over to be with her because she needed company and did not want to be alone. When I arrived, I found her slumped over at her desk, face down on her diary, and in her hand was a new back scratcher I had not seen before. I was accustomed to her back scratchers, as she always had one handy. She said she never knew when a maddening itch would pop up and need to be scratched. I found this just to be another of her amusing and endearing traits. She was breathing very shallow when I found her, and I could not arouse her, so I called emergency services. The paramedics could not get a response from her either, and went into full rescue mode after placing her on the stretcher as she stopped breathing. I cannot believe how much weight she has lost, and she does not look well at all. Her skin has a pale yellow tint and is stretched tight across her hands and face. I watched as one of the medics put a needle in her arm and hooked up an IV bag to introduce fluids, while the other worked the bulb on a mask to breathe for her. When the IV was flowing, that medic began doing rhythmic chest compressions to make her blood flow. They tried using a defibrillator to restart her heart, but it was no use. It seemed they were there working on her forever until they finally stopped and gave up. She passed on, and there was nothing they could do to revive and stabilize her for transport. I kissed her one last time before they took her away from me. It tore my heart out when I saw them place the sheet over her face and I collapsed into her chair where I found her. Now I'm alone sitting at her desk, knowing I will not see her again in this life. Maybe I'm in shock, I don't know, but I'm not ready to drive home yet. It's hard to breathe and my chest feels heavy. At the same time, it feels as though the weight of the world is sitting on my shoulders, holding me here. Here, in what was once her home, and my second home for all intents and purposes. We dated for several years and even begun talking about the possibility of marriage earlier this year. Sitting here at her desk, mindlessly holding her newest back scratcher, I can't believe she's gone. We were just talking a couple hours ago and other than her not feeling well, she was fine. I did not understand what happened. Everything seemed to be going her way. When she returned from her vacation, she went back to the gym and resumed eating healthy in pursuit of her personal body image goal, and it was working. She had lost a bunch of weight and was beginning to look really sexy. Not that it mattered to me. I loved her no matter how she looked, but I did like her transformation. Wiping my eyes, I looked down and saw she'd been writing in her diary. I know diaries are meant to be private, but she's gone now and who will ever read it if I don't? Using her new back scratcher to relieve an itch between my shoulder blades, I mindlessly flipped back in the pages to the last day of her vacation. It seems that was when she found the new back scratcher. I continued to read. Entry 1 Sitting on the beach, watching the waves, I had not felt at such peace in quite a long time. The silky feel of the warm sand between my toes and fingers contrasted with the soft, cool breeze coming off of the water, giving me a sense of belonging and being at one with the world. The cares of my life simply faded into obscurity like waves on the sand. Looking out at the island, the left side was cast in shadow, as the right was glowing in bright sunshine. I watched as seabirds glided slowly past, looking for fish in the water. 
The setting sun cast a warm orange glow from the west, while night raced to cover the world from the east in deepening shades of blue. For a moment, I paused to ponder why we refer to the day in terms of sunrise and sunset, instead of sunrise and night rise. Then I noticed the shadows creeping out from the eastern side of the rocks around me, toward the east, as if to welcome the night and pull it into existence. Watching the shadow of a piece of driftwood, it reached across the sand like a finger. As it lengthened, it seemed to be pointing at something coming out of the sand to my left. It looked like a small hand reaching out toward the sky. Getting up, I walked over to see what it was. Four delicate little fingers and a thumb reached upwards from a thin wrist. I knelt to examine it closer and saw it was made of wood. Using the water of the waves as they reached up to caress the wooden wrist, I slowly fanned the sand away to expose it. After a few minutes, it wobbled with the flow of the water and I knew it was free. I gently pulled it from the sand and rinsed it in the next wave. The buried end of the stick was vaguely handle-shaped and had a pommel of a face. The face was intricately carved down to the finest detail of pupils in the eyes, all three eyes. The face had a third eye in the center of the forehead. The nose was fairly broad with flared nostrils and the mouth reflected tightly clenched teeth in a grimace. Looking it over, it seemed to be an intricately carved back scratcher. I smiled at my latest find. I collect odd things I find when I visit the beaches and woods of the world. On most every trip, I find some little item that I keep and take home to join the other pieces I keep around my desk to remind me of my travels. This one was special, though. It seemed to be a back scratcher, and I have a particular fondness for back scratchers. Some may think I'm odd, but I keep a back scratcher close by wherever I am. At home, I keep one on the table beside my chair where I watch television and play video games. There's one tucked between the mattresses of my bed in case I need it in the night, as well as in the center console of my truck and at my desk. Whenever a maddening itch assaults my back or shoulders, my back scratchers come to the rescue. The back scratchers by my bed and chair are made of wood like this one, but they are simply flat wood with a steamed end resembling a curved fork. The one on my desk has a telescoping metal tube handle with a miniature curved leaf rake at the end, and the one in my truck has what appears to be the paw of a metal cat. All are unique and relished. I carried my new treasure back to the hotel with me. Walking up the trail to my room, I looked out on the beach to watch the sunset. It had been a good break, and tomorrow when I return home, I should be rejuvenated enough to carry on with life until my next much needed break. I would also be returning to the gym to resume my diet and exercise plan. I still needed to lose about a hundred pounds to feel good about myself again, and now I would need to work extra hard for a couple weeks to make up for my indulgences on this trip. It's okay though, because I know my boyfriend, Derek, loves me as I am. Still, I do like the way he gets excited when he sees the positive changes I'm making for myself. I'll write again soon. Entry 2 It has been a hectic couple of weeks. Work has been crazy, and the patients seem to have lost their minds while I was away. It seems every day I'm having to deal with multiple crises, and most of them are caused by patients not following doctor's orders or making unreasonable demands for appointment scheduling. On a positive note though, I am losing weight. In fact, I have lost 20 pounds in the last two weeks and had to go buy new scrubs for work as mine were too large for the elastic to keep my pants up and the drawstrings just bunched them up and made me look messy. I am happy though at how I'm starting to look. Some of the girls at work have noticed too and I sometimes catch them casting jealous glances my way. 
The new back scratcher has found a new home at my desk. Instead of reaching for the telescoping metal rake, I often find myself already holding the new one, and I use it. Each time I do, I feel all warm and stimulated, just like I did on the beach the day I found it. Once I was settled back into my routine, I took the time to examine my new scratcher very carefully. I searched all over it for some indication of who made it and found nothing stamped or printed anywhere. It also seems that the little hand is not made of wood, but rather is actually a well-preserved monkey's paw. I made this discovery rather unexpectedly when I was using it one evening and it scratched my back. When I examined it, I found I had chipped a nail. Naturally, I grabbed an emery board from my desk and filed it smooth. That's when I discovered that under the ages of age and dirt, it was an actual claw. Not only that, but upon further examination, I could swear the claws were longer than when I first found it. Perhaps the skin was swollen from being in the water and drying out and has allowed it to shrink back, exposing more nail, as happens when a person is in their grave. Who knows? Since I found no maker's marks on it, I have taken to comparing the little face to statuary I find on the internet, and I am pretty sure this is an Aztec piece. Probably a replica, devised by the people of the area, but who knows? Maybe I found a real artifact that floated in from the sea. I will write more later as I need to lay down. I'm getting another headache and my muscles feel stiff. I hope I'm not coming down with something I brought back from vacation. Derek and I are going out this weekend. Entry 3 I've taken to using my scratcher more often now, even when I don't have an itch. I hope it helps. My thoughts are jumbled from my now continuous headache, so I hope this makes sense when I read it later, once I feel better. My weekend with Derek was rather disappointing, and I hope he understands that it was only because I am ill that I did not want to make love. I truly enjoy our lovemaking and look forward to it, but had to abstain for medical reasons. In addition to the constant headaches and general feeling of unease, I seem to have some sort of infection. I began to itch down there terribly and had a bit of a discharge. Thinking I probably just had a yeast infection, I used the medicine my doctor recommended, but got no relief. Then, to keep my mind off it while I waited to heal, I immersed myself into the internet to research my new back scratcher. It seems what I've found is a healing wand used by old shaman to rid others of illness and disease. It is definitely of Aztec origin, and according to my research, a shaman would scratch at the skin of an ailing patient with this scratcher to release the source of the illness. Upon reading this, I stuck it in my waistband and gave myself a really good scratching. It felt so good, and to my surprise, afterwards, the itching stopped. Since I've been feeling poorly, I'm not going to the gym, but rather do my exercises here at home. I don't have a treadmill, but I do have a stationary bicycle, so I guess that's good. I am pleased to say I have been continuing to lose weight. I also attribute the weight loss to decreased calorie intake since I never really feel like eating and have to make myself eat something to keep my strength up. It was a little shocking to realize I lost nearly 20 pounds in just the last week. Too fast is unhealthy. Derek. I paused reading the diary to think about what she wrote. I had no idea she was not feeling well when we went out, and wish she had told me that that was the reason she was not interested in my amorous advances. I felt a bit disappointed and wondered if I had done something to upset her. We spent the entire weekend together just sitting around watching television. She did not even want to play video games, which is unusual. I knew she was losing weight, but I had no idea she lost that much that fast. I would have insisted she consult a doctor if I had known. Oh, how I wish I had known, because obviously there was something seriously wrong for me to be here now reading her diary after her passing. Entry 4 
I'm starting to get worried. Derek had to work last weekend, and now I feel so bad I had to put off our plans for this weekend. What I really want is for him to come and hold me and tell me everything will be all right. My relief from the itching was short-lived. The next day when I went to take a shower, I found I had a much worse discharge and it had the look of pus. I called my doctor immediately and have an appointment for the coming week. I've also noticed my skin is starting to show signs of jaundice and my eyes are always dry. The headache never goes away now and I've had it so long that it feels normal and I don't notice it unless I stop to think about it. Who would have ever thought that having a headache could feel normal? I'm also having trouble keeping anything down and have taken to eating soup at pretty much every meal except breakfast when I have a protein shake. I just realized I was scratching my back with the scratcher again. I'm not sure if it's just because I believe that it can relieve sickness or just because it is a habit, but it does not seem to help. I guess old magic does not work in the modern world. According to my research though, it seemed to work really well for the shaman of old. For them, according to the texts I found, it was pretty much like having Jesus touch you. Despite not being able to work out, I still lost 25 pounds this past week. I wish I had the energy to go out and buy some new clothes so I could show off for Derek when we're finally able to get together. I actually have a waist now and my chest sticks out way past my belly. Sure, there's still a little bit of a paunch, but it's small and there's no fat on my hips or back anymore. I will write again later. I need to lay down. What a way to spend Saturday night. Entry 5 I was awakened by the telephone a little while ago. It was my supervisor asking why I had not come to work today. I started to explain to her that I was not scheduled to work on Sunday and she pointed out that it was Monday evening. I had to look at my phone to confirm it was indeed Monday evening. I had slept from Saturday night until now on Monday evening. I told her I was ill and had to head for the bathroom because I was about to throw up. I also told her not to expect me for a couple days and that I had a doctor's appointment for Wednesday afternoon. After using the bathroom, I washed up and changed my underwear. They were extremely soiled from the discharge, despite having a sanitary pad on. I went into the kitchen and made myself a cup of chicken noodle soup. It tasted bland, but I forced myself to eat it all before coming back to my desk with a glass of water. When I looked in the mirror, I almost did not recognize myself. I have lost so much weight, my face looks bony to me, and my fingers are very thin. I can see every vein on the back of my hands as I write this. All I have to do is hang on for one more day and then I will be in to see the doctor and find out what's going on. At least I have my back scratcher to make me feel a little better. Entry 6 I was awakened once again by the phone. This time it was my doctor's office asking if I would like to reschedule the appointment I missed today. I slept through two whole days again. I told them I would call back in the morning and reschedule, but I don't think I can afford to wait. I need to use the bathroom, and after that I think I'm going to call Derek and ask him to take me to the hospital. I thought about calling the ambulance, but I'm scared, and I don't want to go alone. I need someone who cares about me to be there for me. Oh my god! When I walked into the bathroom, I saw my reflection and I looked like walking death. My eyes are sunk back in my head. My skin is thin and yellow, and I've lost a scary amount of weight. When I went to sit on the toilet, I felt my hips as I slid my underwear down and I could picture a starving cow. I had to wash and change my underwear again. It was even worse this time, and there was blood in the toilet when I finished. 
I need to call Derek, but I'm crying so hard I can't see the dial. I need to get it together. The scratcher on my back is comforting. Almost like having a warm hand of someone who loves me touching me. I keep scratching as I wipe my eyes until I could finally call Derek. He said he would be over as soon as he got dressed as he just got out of the shower after work. I pulled up the page of my research on the new back scratcher to take my mind off of how I feel. Now I wish I could stop crying long enough to read it because I found a hyperlink to a separate article about it written by another researcher. I hope Derek gets here soon. I'm going to lay my head on the desk and rest until he comes. Derek. That was the last entry. It hurts so much to know that she wrote that as she was waiting for me. I do understand what she meant by the way the back scratcher feels. As I read her journal, I was absently scratching my back with it, and it was almost as if she was here with me, rubbing my back like she used to. I don't know what I'm going to do without her. I was planning to spend the rest of my life with her and even have the ring in my pocket now. As I get up from the desk to go home, I wonder if I should call her parents or wait and let the medical examiner make the notification. I'm not sure her parents even know we were dating or if they even know who I am. When I closed her diary, I bumped the mouse next to it. Her computer monitor lit up and I see the page she was referring to. Curious, I decided to read it before shutting down the computer. Staring at the back scratcher in my hand, I have a deep feeling of dread and uncertainty now after reading the new article she found. This is what I read. While the healing wand was used by the shaman or priest to heal, it could also be used to harm. When wielded by anyone other than the shaman or priest, instead of absorbing illness, the wand imparts it to the one whose skin it touches. Thank you for spending your time with me. Tell me what you think in the comments, and I'll be sure to join the conversation. That's all for now, but I'll be back again soon with another story just for you. Until then, sleep well.